that was one of the <coughs> most beautiful things about learning NBC that was different than anything I had learned before. Other things I had learned stopped with the feelings, and it was actually dropping into the needs that let me um, heal or shift or whatever kind of terminology you get to use. So, some people like to, to write this. Um, you can write, you can start in Jackal and write all of your thoughts, and then when you kind of lose, um, lose a little bit of steam, try translating them into the observation of what happened and what you're telling yourself. Um, and then write your feelings um, and your needs. It's often not as linear a process as this looks. A lot of times you might get down to your feelings, it might stimulate more thoughts. You might get down to your needs and then find different feelings coming up. So it's often not that you start here, go here, go here, go here, but you, you can cycle back through and, and you stimulate yourself. So just just writing and then eventually getting to a place where a request kind of um, organically comes. If you're pushing yourself to make a request, you probably aren't ready yet. There may not be a request either, with self-empathy is special. Thoughts, you can do this, um, you can do this just in your head, if you're not somebody who likes to process in writing, you can just ask yourself kind of explicitly, um, what happened, what am I telling myself about what happened, what story am I making up, um, how does that feel in my body? And what needs are those feelings pointing on um, talking? Some people just talk to themselves. They just talk it out loud. Um, feeling. It's a little bit like what I led you through in the very beginning in the quieting. Um, so you actually sit with, we didn't really sit with our thoughts. We kind of got present in the room. But I used to do something. I used to do something for eight minutes a day where for two minutes I got present. I put that up there. Um, and then two minutes I just noticed my thoughts. Two minutes I noticed my feeling. Two minutes I noticed my needs. So it's more of a, a little less cognitive, a little less thinking, a little less putting words on things, and a little more just experiencing it. So those are some, some different ways to do self-empathy. Um, and it's, one of the things I love about it is that it transforms the pain. So the, the pain in what happens to us in life, I'm sure you've all heard, it's not what happens, it's what we do with it. And to me what that means is um, there's a lot of pain in our thoughts and our stories and our observation, in our, in our, um, in our judgments, in our, you know, when we're talking to ourselves. There's a lot of pain we cause. That pain is a direct reflection of the beauty of, of needs that are up for you. So in other words, you wouldn't feel the pain if there wasn't something that you loved. So um, I'll give a, a really big example. Last year, Doug was in the hospital on the verge of death um, from H1N1. It was in the ICU. Every single time there was a little change in, in the machine, the numbers, I would get, if it was negative, I would get very upset. So the observation was just that maybe his oxygenation went down 2%. That's it. The story I was telling myself is, he's going to die. The pain was huge because because of how much I loved Doug and wanted him to live. Had I not cared about Doug, wouldn't have been the pain there. <laughs> so, um, but that's true of everything. Um, the story I was telling myself, I'm such an idiot about dropping that. I really wanted to belong. I think I think just kind of to society. <coughs> I wanted to be a you know, I wanted to be a person who was responsible and. 
didn't break things. So the pain was a direct reflection of my wanting to belong. So if you can hold your needs, see your unmet needs as a direct reflection of something that you really hold dear, then you can get in touch with, with the beauty of that inside yourself. Uh -huh. Can you um, give a little more help on needs, like when you lose something? Someone dies, you're going through a divorce, so they're not there. Uh -huh. um, what's, your, what's a need then? I mean, sure. it's kind of like, well, I need them to be alive again, or... or because, you know, and if they were alive, what would you have? Um, I would have love going both ways with an alive person, as opposed to just alone with love. So you have mutual mutual love. Yeah. So yeah. that would be. Amazing. So then, if you if you decide that the need is mutual love, mm -hmm. but they're dead, then is the request to get mutual love from someone who's alive? You know. Well. Um. It it could be. But a, re a need, I, I actually don't prefer the word need, and I'll tell you why. A need, when you use the word need, it sounds to me like something concrete that you either have or you don't have. Mm -hmm. And I prefer the word value. Because if I value something, then that's just part of me. It's an integral part of me. It's who I am. Nobody can take it away. And if I hold it, if I, you can use any word you want, but if you hold it, as more of a value, I, I really value mutuality and of love. I really value um, connection and intimacy. And, um, then it's not necessarily something you need to do something about. I'm simply getting in touch with the fact that that is who I am, and that's what's up to me. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So there's not so much of a drive to do something. A request might be um, to mourn. A request might be to get in touch with that that value or that need. Um, to put aside time every day to get in touch with them. So it may not be I'm missing this and I want to get it in a concrete way. It may be just to connect with that inside myself. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Comments? Okay, um, so I wanted to do um, a couple of practices. This is actually hard, and it's hard because we haven't learned it. I mean, it's hard for most people, I should say. It's not hard for everybody. It's hard just because we haven't learned this from, from birth, from childhood. And so it's kind of a new, a new way of talking to ourselves. Um, so I want to do a couple exercises. One is where somebody else demonstrates this. Um, so you can see what it looks like, and then, then we'll try doing it with ourselves. So I see people shifting, and I'm wondering if you'd like a break for a few minutes? Yeah? Okay, one person's nodding yes, so I'm going to go with that. <laughs> okay, so why don't we just meet back at five after? You can use the restroom and get some drink. Okay, I'm going to start. Um, so I'm wondering if you would like to see me do self evidence try to do self-empathy with myself? Sure. Yeah? Yes. Sure. Okay. So, yes. I don't know, I don't know how it will go. Um, there was something today that I didn't work on on purpose because I, thought, <laughs> because I tried doing this once in a group and I, after I finished, one, one man said, you know, it didn't really feel alive and it was because I had done it already. He was right. <laughs> he was right. Um, which shows you that I'm not a very good actress. So I saved something, and uh, I thought maybe I'd just close my eyes and pretend you're all gone and talk out loud. And I doubt I will go straight down in order, so you might want to just see where you think I am. I'll probably jump all over the place. And you can see. Uh -huh. I'm totally confused about the request part of self -interest. Okay. Is that, I mean, you, you said before that it's really not necessary, but I don't even, I don't think I would ever, are you talking about request of yourself or another person? Or it another could person? be either. So, um, the olive oil, I made a request 
well, I guess I first made a request of myself to go get help, and then I made a request of them to clean it up. Um, it could be um, a request of self that's not, in, not so much in um, a physical action. It could be, um, so when I started doing this, I made a request of myself to, um, when I walk the dog, I listen to a, um, a tape that's got NBC or BBC <coughs> teachings rather than the music I used to listen to. Um, it could be a request like that. Um, it could be, do you have an example? No, but maybe I'll think of one. Okay, I'll think of one. Okay. Yeah, let me know. Um, okay, well, let's see if one comes up on this. Um, so, what happened today is I have a 21 year old daughter who's away at college in Santa Barbara and she had her blistering teeth out this morning. She decided not to come home, but to do it down there. And Doug and I thought we were going to go down there this weekend and be with her. And our our plans changed. And after she scheduled it, we were going to go down. And even as I say that, I notice um, a pain in the pit of my stomach and a heaviness. Um, down there this morning she had someone drop her off and someone else pick her up and bring her home and then her roommates had to go to class and I, I feel uh, just feel a sharp pain and heaviness thinking of her being alone um, and also I feel guilt uh, and I notice thoughts like I'm not a good mother if I was a good mother I would have dropped everything and put everything else aside. What else is a bigger priority? And then I noticed thoughts of, um, she's gonna think I don't care. Um, I wasn't there for her, she, she rarely needs anything, and I wasn't there for her when she needed something. Say you wanted to express to her how important she is to you? Um, I think I wanted to express how much I wanted to be there and why when I got to those needs. Yeah. I'd like to just say those out loud to her. Yeah. And is that in the request then? That yeah. Like it was, is the request it's sort of the action statement? Yeah. Oh, this is some actions I can take. Yeah, so that was yeah. the request of myself to express it to her. Yeah. And I was actually tomorrow. So it's actually a little more specific even in my mind. 